forensic science delhi in and he is board of studies member of forensic science university of calicut Rendisar is an active participant and guide in the activities of ICFSA, holding a position in the advisory committee of ICFSA. Once again, I welcome you, sir. Participant, please make sure that your audio is mute and video is turned off. Now, I hand over the session to Rendit, sir. Thank you. Hi, good morning to all. Shiva, am I audible? Yes, sir. Please carry on. Ah, okay, okay. Welcome to all participants. Thank you, Mr. Shridhi, for your nice words. My name is Ranjit. I'm the Joint Chemical Examiner of Regional Chemical Examiner's Laboratory, Code. As you know, the Chemical Examiner's Laboratory is the pioneer of Forensic Science Laboratory. And the Chemical Examiner's Laboratory Department is working under the administrative control of Home Department, Kerala. We have three laboratories in Kerala, and all of them are good NABL accreditation under the leadership of Jagumar and Sir. I think this webinar is honored with the presence of uh, Jagumar and Sir, Chief Chemical Examiner to Government of Kerala. He is online, and Dr. Raka Jain, Professor and Head of Laboratory, National. Drug Dependence Treatment Center, Ames, New Delhi. Then Dadanesh Mima, is the, she is the Joint Chemical Examiner, Regional Chemical Examiner's Laboratory, Arnagulam. And so many of my colleagues and friends are there. Abdul Rasak is there. Welcome to all of you. So I can't see all of you. Anyway, sirs and madams, welcome all of you. As the moderator mentioned, this is the 13th session in the series of webinars conducted by ICFSA, Indian Criminology and Forensic Science Association, with an evergreen, evergreen title, Transformation Through Technology. Means it is very relevant because forensic science is a multidisciplinary subject, and a forensic scientist should imbibe with the contemporary knowledge in the techniques, uh, technology, and science. I congratulate Dr. Shiva Prasad as well as Dr. Fabian Baby and all ICFSA family for their initiative and hard work during this COVID-19 period. I think this is the second presentation by Randox Toxicology. Earlier one was by Mr. Anil. And this Randox Toxicology is a dedicated toxicology company with a strong and development capability primarily working with their own patented biochip array technology for the detection of drugs of abuse and alcohol from various biological samples such as blood, urine, saliva, then post-mortem blood, hairs, etc. Randox is capable of detecting more than 600 drugs compounds, which includes the most advanced NPS drugs as well as classical drugs. And today we have the speaker, Mr. Nikit Alex Nainan, having more than 10 years of experience in diagnostic market, is currently working as business development manager for South Asian market for Randox Toxicology. Mr. Nikit has completed his BTEC in biotechnology and his master's in business administration. During his tenure in Randox for the last five years, he was successful in recommending technologies to government organizations funded projects for WHO understanding the prevalence of drugs in India. Currently, he is also working with many foreign universities for implementing and evaluating technologies for roadside drug testing in India. He is a recent success was with the Bangladesh government for uh, recommending technologies in setting up of a national doping center in countries who are against drugs. Many new and innovative products have been launched by Randox Toxicology. And today, Mr. Nikit will be presenting evidence multi-stage, a fully automated analyzer to detect new psychoactive, psychoactive substance and roadside drug testing. I don't know whether it is a coincidence or not. Yesterday was the International Day Against Drug Abuse. And now I hand over the session to the speaker Mr. Nikit, 
all participants are once again requested to strictly follow the guidelines by the organizers and again please yeah uh, thank you dr ranjan for the kind words and the introduction so i will be sharing my presentation is there any confusion no 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 i'm just trying to share it it's okay oh, okay yeah okay okay carry on so is my screen visible yes yes so you are on the first slide okay so uh, thank you so much uh, dr ranjit again for your kind words uh, thank you for the association icfsa who we are uh, kind of associated for the last few months and it has been a very good journey in using your platform to introduce um, randox toxicology as a company and our product portfolio for especially drugs of abuse testing in the indian market uh, also thank you uh, mrs swati ajayan for the kind words about our company uh, i also see uh, dr jay kumaran sir being joined thank you sir for joining I also see Dr. Raka, ma'am, from AIMS joining the session. Thank you so much, ma'am, for coming down. And uh, I also see Dr. Amit Patel from uh, AIMS Bihar also joining the session. Thank you, sir, for uh, taking a time out of your busy schedule and uh, uh, participating in this presentation. So, as uh, Dr. Ranjit said, uh, today I will be talking about uh, one of the analyzers called Evidence Multistat, uh, which is uh, one of the new analyzers using the same biochip array technology we were uh, we, we are kind of bringing out new uh, analyzers which suits different applications in the field of uh, drug testing so multi uh, evidence multistat is the newest version and uh, this presentation will primarily focus on how this machine is used worldwide uh, in roadside drug testing so myself i am nikit nainan and i am the business manager for south asia for randox toxicology so for those of you who have seen our uh, presentation which um, uh, anil had conducted a few weeks before this slide would have been the same but i um, you know kind of um, we feel proud to introduce our company where we are a part of a, uh, a, a global healthcare company which was established by this gentleman where you see on the screen his name is called dr peter fitzgerald in the year 1982 and uh, now we we are proud enough to introduce our company as a global leader in in vitro diagnostics and uh, uh, in the beginning randox laboratory started as a core clinical um, chemistry organization and has the development progressed has our quality products reached the market we diversified into five different entities uh, which is called randox laboratory now which comes under the parent group randox laboratories we have randox toxicology we have randox food diagnostics we have randox bioscience and uh, we have randox healthcare so randox toxicology is where i work and i represent we are primarily focusing on forensic toxicology solutions to you know compact the the new drugs in the market um with 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 a core r&d and a core research and uh, um, a scientist working uh, dedicatedly to you know to to address the the uh, the, the prevalence of new drugs in the market uh, same has randox toxicology we also have randox food diagnostics where the core of the business again remains to identify the antibiotics or the adulterations in the food Uh, which is supplied globally and then we have randox biosciences which which again is a research uh, development uh, in in the field of molecular testing 
and uh, uh, we we have the most uh, um, you know the recent launch for the COVID-19 testing done by the Randox Bioscience team, and also we have Randox Health, which is a standalone private laboratory uh, like the likes of SRL or Dr. Lal Path in India, so most commonly seen in the UK and the Middle East territory. So as a whole, Randox is is one of the global leaders in in the healthcare sector and. Uh, Moving on to the next slide, so just a, just about what Randox was doing during this lockdown time when when most of the companies were were having a tough time in selling their products, but Randox uh, interestingly were were busy in investing on on uh, on on their new technology, which was helping them to address the government of UK uh, in helping out to develop new uh, tests for coronavirus. So we created 200 new jobs. And we were on the frontliners in, in, in offering, uh, you know, um, technologies for the government organizations in addressing this COVID pandemic. So Randox is in the front line when it comes to any, uh, you know, any sector in, with respect to the healthcare and the diagnostics. So moving on, I will be focusing more on Randox toxicology because we would be talking on what what are we and then what is the technology and how this technology used in roadside test testing. So I would like to place this slide uh, on, on on every presentation that I do to my customer, highlighting the the backbone of our company where we call them as the uh, you know the backbone where the R and D is something that we are uh, where the sales or the marketing team is backed. So every query that we go back to our R&D, we have a solution. And that is why we call ourselves as a very uh, technical or sh should, should be honest in saying that we are a core toxicology company where people or the customers come back to us asking if we have you know, solutions for the new drugs in the market. So this is also one advantage where our UK, uh, where our, in UK, in our headquarters, the R&D team uh, raises all the antibodies and develops assays everything in, in house so basically this this shows the quality and uh, you know when it comes to drug testing the sensitivity and the specificity of the antibodies and the results are very important so everything is manufactured in house we have complete control over what we are giving to the customer um, you know proportionately increasing the quality of the product that we give so we currently have 15 new assays in development, so every time you look into the pipeline of the R&D, they have 50 new assays coming out for the market, and uh, has every um, you know good com uh, production company. We are also ISO recognized 1348 standards, and Randox provides high quality drug testing uh, in their own facility. So this is a just about our R&D, and they are our um, you know to be honest to say our backbone. So what is Randox toxicology? So Till date, we have spent about 220 million GBP spent on R&D itself, and uh, we more new tests in development than any other diagnostic company. To be honest, when we compare with our competitors, we, you see the test menu that we offer to our customers. We stand uh, one step ahead of our customers. That is solely because we have a very active R&D team where where we invest and we we, we help our customers to you know, compact the drug menace in their own territory. So uh, formed in 2015 has a different, sorry, 2012 has a different entity. Um, Randox Toxicology has the largest toxicology test menu currently, where we have solutions to test 500 di different drugs and its metabolites currently. So our machines, that is our, our screening devices, which we call biochip array technology, has more than 90% agreement with the confirmatory methods at the likes of GC and NCMS. So we currently also have the world's fastest drug screening analyzer uh, with a throughput of roughly around 3960 tests per hour. So that has been uh, recognized as the world's fastest drug screening analyzer. So what is biochip array technology and what are we, you know, this is the entire technology that we are talking about and we are trying to introduce into different markets for the benefit of our customers. So the image that you see on the screen is, is one biochip and a magnified version of one biochip. 
and if you look at it to the uh, magnified image of the biochip you have white dots which are seen there and we call it as dtr that is discrete test region and each of the discrete test region will have specific antibodies specific to each of the drug embedded into it so for example one of the uh, white dot which you see the dtr will have antibodies which is specific, specific uh, to cocaine another one will have uh, um, an antibody which is specific to thc another one with benzodiazepine another one with amphetamine so it's a collective antibodies put on to a, a single biochip and you know giving you multiple results so that is what the first sentence say on the slide simultaneous deduction of multiple drug class from a single specimen so when you run a urine or a blood uh, sample onto a biochip your sample is being tested for 21 different drugs and they are quantified and they are given to you on a different um, quantity of the drugs which is present in the sample so one sample plus one biochip gives you a complete panel of results so if it is an unknown sample the more the drugs you have in a panel the more efficient your result or the more efficient your testing system is. So as a laboratory manager, you will know that the cost and the time is what you will be working at. So when you do a multiplexing, you are cutting down on time. Time is also money. And also you're cutting down on the cost. When it comes to cost, you're cutting down on reagents which you use to do individual testing rather than you're clubbing 21 different drugs, putting onto a same platform and getting the results. So indirectly, this is a cost effective and a time effective method when you compare it with the current traditional method followed in the laboratory. Whereas this technology is suitable for forensic setups, clinical toxicology, for drug monitoring, for workplace drug testing, for rehab centers. And also we have customers using it for testing animals for racing labs like camels and horses are being tested if they are given any steroids. So the application is wide when it comes to biochip array technology, simply because we have a platform which can accommodate different types of uh, sample matrices in a single platform. So again, what is the biochip? It's the, the, the image you see here is the, is the biochip carrier that uh, you see here. Uh, just take it, yeah. So this is the biochip carrier and each of the biochip will carry one sample each and then each of the sample is tested for 21 different drugs at a go. So in a crust, this is the technology where we have consolidated different tests into one single chip and making uh, you know, the testing more efficient and uh, specific. So you see there are about 49 discrete test regions on the biochip currently and we have capacity of putting 44 different tests that is one for cocaine, one for amphetamine, one for benzodiazepines. So like that we have a capacity of putting in 44 different tests currently and then you also have one reference spot, three correction spots and one alignment spot. So this, this come in when when the machine is needs to be aligned because the machine that you will run this biochip is basically a chemiluminescence camera and then once the sample is loaded in the camera will spot on to the reference spot checking that whether everything on the biochip is, is perfect as it was manufactured in our manufacturing facility and while it was in the transit if there is something if, if there is a temperature a temperature down or if, if there is anything that has harmed the biochip to the customer side then this reference spot is compared and an error is flagged so this is kind of an internal uh, qc control that we have inside a biochip basically we are increasing the confidence of the forensic toxicologist or uh, or anyone who is running this test saying that it is not just running the sample and we interpreting we also have internal quality kept in to understand that the sample loaded in and the test on the biochip is, is under the optimum temperature or is under the optimum condition where the biochip was manufactured in the So yes, so that's the three reference spot which I was talking. Basically, it's an internal QC function. So what is the science behind biochip array technology? It's a one-step competitive immunoassay format. So what happens is, this is a substrate, the green color is a substrate where 
the antibodies of each of the drugs are yeah so these are the substrate uh, these are the places where the antibodies which is specific to each of the drugs are coated and then when the antigen from the sample comes in it goes and binds to the specific antibodies and then what happens we give you a conjugate which is enzyme link uh, enzyme linked which is hrp the enzyme and then these enzyme linked emulate the chemiluminescence light once the uh, signal reagent is is added on the luminol which is added on so for example if this is specific to thc and the sample which is loaded in has an antigen of thc there is antigen which is binding all to the antibody spot and then we add a conjugate and the conjugate adds on to the antibody and it, it illuminates light so this is a place where the antigen from the sample is also loaded in and this is a place where the antibodies of a different drug say for example cocaine has been um, embedded into it so there is no cocaine into the sample and there is no antigen binded into it so what happens is over here the conjugate binding will be more and over here the conjugate binding will be less because the antigen has already captured most of the places so that is why the second sentence says light signal is inversely proportional to the antigen concentration whereas if it is a positive sample if it is a positive uh, sample for thc the light emitted will be less and the negative place the light emitted will be more because the conjugate is binding here and it is a enzyme linked and it illuminates the chemical so again once the illumination is carried over it is measured by chemiluminescence which is highly sensitive providing the lowest level of deduction i assume that in a drug drug deduction the lowest volume of a drug should also be captured and that is when a decision making is done precisely so giving you a, a, a just about how the illumination happens inside the machine so once the and uh, once the and, uh, sample is loaded in you have the conjugate put in and you have the uh, light reaction generating reaction that is luminol and peroxide added on so this is the each of the biochip and this is how the uh, illumination looks like so if you look over here the light emitted is less and if you look over here the light emitted is more so precisely it says that over here the sample is positive for the particular um, parameter that is the particular antibody and antigen is being bound and over here the sample is negative for example if it is over here it is cocaine it is negative for cocaine and if it is here thc it is positive for thc so light generated is chemiluminescence and then we we use this charged coupled device camera to capture the image and then what happens is once the relative light units are captured by the chemiluminescence lens it is converted into ng by ml by the software which is installed in the machine so over here it explains a negative sample will produce a high light signal output that is a high level of enzyme label conjugate has bound to the antibody whereas a positive sample will produce a low light signal output that is a low level of enzyme label conjugate has bound to the antibody so that is why we call the light signal is inversely proportional to the antigen concentration so you see here the difference this is negative and this is going to be positive again it's a simple comparison about different technologies which are available in the market chromatography ria rma elisa fluorescence and chemiluminescence stands um, higher when it comes to detection limit and also offers higher sensitive and linearity when it comes to drug testing achieves lower limits of deduction can identify lower concentration of the drug compared to the other immunoassays and obtain semi quantitative results and thus becoming highly accurate screening so a quick video on how this technology works will will definitely give you an idea about how things yeah i hope everyone is able to see the video
You see the chemical industry has been shown here. So now getting on to the second topic of my presentation. So this, this while I was explaining how our analyzers are working, what is the principle of biochip array technology. Now we, we focus both on this particular analyzer, which is evidence multistat. Again, uh, this particular analyzer can run blood, urine, and oral fluid. Blood includes again postmortem blood, uh, uh, urine, and oral fluid. All three will not require any sample preparation. Uh, even in the case of postmortem samples, you don't need any sample preparation and you can directly load it onto the cartridge. So the cartridge over here slightly looks different because this is a fully automated system. And uh, this is the cartridge which you see on the screen and each of the cartridge is used for one single sample. So if you see the number one which is mentioned here, you have a cutoff material being added here. Basically, the cutoff material will tell the sample saying that anything above the cutoff, you will show it as positive and anything below the cutoff, you will report it as negative. So this cutoff material is given along with the kit and then you will load it along with the sample, each of the sample. Over here, the sample chamber, you will be loading 200 microliters of sample over here. And then the foil cover and the fluid reservoir. So you see the foil cover here is the pre-filled fluids. That is all the buffer solutions, the conjugates, everything is pre-filled and it is given to you so all that you will have to do here is load onto the cutoff material here and the sample over here and then load the cartridge onto the uh, analyzer so the number four over here is the two biochips that which is placed on the rear end of the cartridge so one of the biochips will process one of the sample another biochip will process the cutoff material so it is basically comparing the luminescence of the cutoff material and the sample and then making the decisions so over here you will be screening 21 different samples from one single cartridge and one single sample so what is the features of the analyzer it is again a fully touch screen analyzer very easy to use user friendly and uh, that's the, the the screen which you see over here the second one is the uh, tip cartridge drawer so you see the the cartridge over here everything is foiled, foiled and everything is covered so the machine is given a cartridge box which i will be showing in the next few slides the cartridge box has pipettes the tips of the pipettes which will enable the robotics of the machine to pierce and take all the pre-filled solutions and drop it onto the biochip when and when required so this place will again that particular cartridge will be only specific for one cartridge that is for one sample, you will be loading one cartridge and one sample cartridge. So, and after that, it will be discarded. So, it is a use and throw uh, system because th there shouldn't be any cross contamination or any, uh, you know, we are, we, are, we are reporting forensic and uh, other kind of uh, drug testing. So, we should be very careful. So, the second part over here is the tip cartridge drawer. The user will insert the pre filled tips cartridge here prior to the testing. And the third part is where you will load the cartridge with your sample. The user will insert the uh, reagent cartridge here prior to the testing. So once these two are loaded in, you will close this tray and press the start button over here. The fourth point again says uh, that there are USB slots where you can you know, connect your printer and take printouts. Another USB slot will be uh, used to load all the data about a particular kit because the machine can do three or four matrix at a time, you will have to inform the machine that you will be sending urine samples or blood samples by using the USB which will be given by the uh, manufacturer itself. So each time you change your matrix, uh, you will be loading the uh, USB and saving it onto the uh, system inside the machine. So again, the wide applications over here, um, since this machine do not require a laboratory environment. This can be used in trauma wards, emergency wards. It can be used in workplace drug testing, like you know, you, uh, a, a small medical tr uh, treatment center in any corporate offices or any any place where they can easily, uh, you know, any anyone 
you don't need a dedicated technician to run the analyzer. We can use it in rehabs. We can use it in mining industry where they don't have, you know, facilities to to, to bring out people very often because all these are located in remote areas. Medical examiners, like people who go on to uh, like a shipping vessel or like a rig or an oil vessel where they are taken for an evacuation, they can use it there. There are uh, racing and anti-doping labs using this machine. Prisons, again, there are, uh, you know, drug testing done on a random basis in prisons. You know, doctor surgeries, again, if, if, if a doctor needs to understand before an autopsy is done, if he needs to understand what, what is the cause of death or if there is any uh, drug overdose, he can immediately take the sample, run it and understand if there is a drug. Again, airport, there is a lot of customers, uh, you know, pilots being tested these days for drugs and new drugs. So there's a wide range of applications which can be used, uh, which can use our system. So again, uh, very simple process. You collect the sample, you add it onto the cartridge, you load the sample. So this is the tip box which I was talking about. So you see six different tips and all the six different tips will be used to pierce the spoil sheet and load the, the reagents onto the biochip. So once the, the use is over, the machine, the robotic itself will come and put it, discard it onto this place. And that signs that the, the, the cartridge and the tip box needs to be discarded and the new ones needs to be taken for each of the sample. So once you load these two, you press the start button and wait for 20 minutes and you get 21 different drugs tested. So again, um, you know, I'll have a small video which will show you how multi-stat works. <clears throat> so multi-stat process user step, it prepares the sample and add on to the cartridge, load reagent cartridge and tip cartridge to the multi-stat and then yeah this is this is a more uh, you know brief way of explaining. So all these steps, the step one, step two, step three, step four, step five is done by the analyzers itself, it is all fully automated and you reach on to the step six where the results and the reports are being uh, you know generated under 20 minutes so again you know it is just showing you the software screen all that you will have to do is the array name it, uh, it highlights what is the array that you run drugs of abuse urine or if it is oral fluid it hi highlights and then you can put on the sample id and sample type and press next and then you need to wait for 20 minutes and then you have the entire results on your screen. This can be taken in the form of a PDF, can be attached onto your, uh, you know, your uh, diagnosis report. So again, what are the tests which is available on this analyzer? When it comes to urine, we have all the advanced drugs and also the classical ones like 6MAM, AB Pinaka, Amphetamine, Cocaine, Barbiturates, Benzodiazepine, Buprenorphine, Creatinine, we have ETG, that is uh, metabolite of alcohol. We have fentanyls, we have synthetic cannabinoids, methadone, methamphetamine. So when you see it's a mixture of new drugs, it's a mixture of classical ones, and it is also a mixture of the most abused ones, like the likes of benzos, opiates, um, cocaine, uh, ETG, that is alcohol. And again, we have two specific kits for urine. The one over here will not have pregambling. This is more, the urine two is more, focused for the Middle East market, which has pregambling, which is more abused. And uh, honestly speaking, we also have a lot of abuse of pregambling happening in India. We have a lot of customers asking us for solutions in pregambling because Middle East, there are a lot of people visiting Middle East and there are a lot of Indians in Middle East as well. So that's why, that is where I again emphasize we, we are a, a more for R&D team or a manufacturer. When we have control over our manufacturing and our R&D, this is possible where well, if, if there is a particular problem or a particular drug which is worrying a particular country, then we can go and you know design a specific uh, kit for that particular country and with the, with the cutoffs which is more suitable for that country. We have recently done it for the likes of Bangladesh, we have done it for Maldives and a lot of countries where the cutoffs are different, we have accommodated that into it. Again, we have oral fluids. So when you see oral fluids, we have drugs included on like LSDs and ketamines, which has low stability 
and which can be detected on using an oral fluid. We also have uh, lights of alpha PVP, which is which is also pretty common. We have oxycodones like opiates, or we have cocaine. So all these are a mixture of drugs which we 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 have a data where people keep abusing, and the metabolites of each drugs are also being abused. So again, we have two different oral fluids over here. It is primarily because we use two different oral fluid collection devices. I will be talking about this in my next few slides, and then you will understand. One of them is is used for one uh, neosal, another one is used for orashua. So there are two different collection devices, and that is why we have two different uh, kits. And the dilution factor is different over here because one of the collection device, uh, the dilution factor is threefold, another one is fourfold. I will be talking about that in the next few slides. Again, this can be used for drug, for the blood system also. Uh, the blood samples can also be tested, and very specifically, we have for the blood. All these are validated for each of the uh, matrices. So, you know, NPS is something that which which most of the drug testing laboratories in the South Asian market are not focusing because the reason why is they are not testing. So, the more you test, the more you will understand what the market is. So. We understand there is a, is a surge of requirement for the new drug, uh, new psychoactive substances in in the Indian market. To be honest, and we also have a lot of studies being conducted by um, you know the organizations uh, which is agreed to WHO in publishing many 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 reports and looking at the trend. When we when we speak with customers who are key opinion leaders in this particular industry, they feel there is a need of introducing new new drugs testing for new drugs in the market because they feel that down the line they do a lot of research and they feel that there are a lot of positive cases for the other drugs so that that is where we immediately address the all we, even though we are not you know regularly supplying to a routine drug testing lab the new psychoactive substances currently in india but we already have a panel which can accommodate the most common ones so this again, I'll have to go and give credits to our R&D and our manufacturing and designing and having a panel on that. So this indirectly strengthened our core you know, value of calling ourselves as a toxicology company. So again, so from 21, we will be moving to a panel of 31 drugs very soon. And these will be the drugs which is accommodated into a panel. So as I said, this is also a benefit when you, when you work with a dedicated toxicology company where we, we come back and forth with new drugs and new solutions in the market. So the third point of my presentation is to focus on roadside drug testing and give you a gist about the Indian scenario. There are a lot of um, key opinion leaders joined in the presentation can be a, a very good give uh, an advice to the police department where you closely work with you advise upon uh, new technologies to them. And this is where I thought I should, you know, talk a little bit about what we as a company has done uh, for the roadside drug testing in the, uh, in the Indian market. So when you look at the, uh, you know, the requirements about the roadside drug testing, it was published in, uh, in, in, the, in the national dailies. And, uh, you know, very interestingly, all the cutouts uh, highlights that the, the drug driving are on a rise. The Times of India calls it, and this is a cutting which, which is in Hyderabad and Delhi. And they, the, the police thinks that the drug testing is on a high, uh, sorry, the drug abuse is on a high, and the cops are kind of clueless because they don't have a system to test whether it is a drug or an alcohol. Because the breath analyzer, what they have currently shows negative, but there is, uh, you know, the, the, the suspects or the, the person who is caught behind the wheels are uh, showing a lot of uh, you know symptoms of uh, some kind of an abuse which is happening and that is why the accident has happened so this this was the first alarm where one of our uh, customers of, uh, i should say one of our potentials called us and uh, checked if we can conduct an evaluation study for one of their law enforcement agencies and uh, you know for, for them to recommend about our system to uh, you know uh, the enforcement agencies in india so we agreed and we are i will be talking about that in the next few slides and um, of late if you focus on on the on the news there were also news which 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 came out in the, in the new uh, indian express saying that 
there, there is a saliva analyzer to catch the drug abusers on its way. But when we went back and checked with the sources, with the, with the police departments, um, you know, they were not satisfied with, with the kits that they get because, to be honest, it, it still had the most common drugs like uh, like amphetamines, barbiturates, benzodiazepines, and it just had a limitation of six to eight drugs. And most of the companies which were, uh, you know, the so-called toxicology companies did not have oral fluid testing on that kit. They just had urine and uh, hair. So oral fluid was a very question, uh, which was a question mark. And again, uh, you see the cutout over here, cops to use test kits to detect drug consumption. Uh, it was it was in Gujarat that, uh, you know, this news broke out and they were trying to use the strip card method where they get uh, the qualitative results on the spot. And uh, yeah, there were reports about like stone driving after marijuana abuse, consumption on the rice. And then so these were the cutouts which which the police felt which needs to be addressed. So what it does to the driver, as, as you all know, that it gives you an impairs of driving, delays reaction time, thus resulting in an accident, reduce perpetual motor coordination and motor performances, basically resulting in, um, you know, um, accidents, cause drowsiness, everything results on an abuse of drugs. So the, the cops need something which, which is very handy and it can be used on a roadside. In case of drunken driving, they have breath analyzer for drug driving. There is no mechanism available except physical appearance and behavior. So this is where the entire project kick started. And that is where we, we started, you know, talking to many agencies, validating our evaluation, government recognized bodies to evaluate our technology and recommend to the government body. So when you look on, on a broader perspective on advanced countries or developing countries, or when it comes to roadside drug testing, the, the most common matrices followed is the oral fluid. So over here in Randox, we have the advantage of doing oral fluid, urine and blood on a single platform. So the current issues is to test the recent drug consumption that can be done with an oral fluid test, quick and reliable results with more drugs, with new drugs, including new psychoactive substances. So that is also done with Randox. Collection of sample. That, that is a question mark, but when it comes to other kits like collecting urine and blood is not possible on a road, whereas collecting the oral fluid using a, a handy collection device, which we give along with our kit, is, is, is very much possible and that would make the life of police easy. So again, there is a deduction window of when it comes to oral fluid, even the low stability drug is, is be able to be deducted in an oral fluid test. So, yes, when, when you say oral fluid testing, there is no doubt that oral fluid drug testing, especially on on-site tests, it is preferred biological matrix worldwide. Again, when it comes to technology that you use, yes, oral fluid can be used in a variety of uh, technologies like the card method, which I was talking about, but your technology should also be a reliable technology, whereas we give you an InnoSI platform, which, which is detected by chemiluminescence, and again, it, it scores high when you compare with the competitor market. Ease of collection device, ease of collection of samples, and shortest detection of uh, you know the drugs which is consumed. So just just to everyone would be knowing this, just to put uh, you know give you an information, the detection time using an oral fluid. This is the quickest. If you do it on a roadside, you will be covering most of the the most unstable drugs like the likes of L, uh, LSDs and THC. So all these are being evaluated on the oral fluid kit and with the lowest cutoff. So even if the slightest of the traces of take of consumption will be detected on our system. So again, this is, uh, you know, uh, giving you a gist. multi step oral fluid is manufactured with lower cutoffs, lower um, with the greater limits of deduction. Low stability drugs, LSD, ketamines, and synthetic drugs are included. And then we are recommending one of our customers. You see a van here, and this is one of our customers who have used this in in Middle East, uh, to be precise, in Saudi, where drug testing is very very stringent. So what they have done is they have put the multi-stat into this van, and they have installed these like a speed interceptor. They have installed it near the check post, and they collect random oral fluid samples and they test it. So it's already been used worldwide. 
the multi-stack because of its ease of using and because it will not require a dedicated technician to run this machine. So all that you will do again is collect sample, add it onto the cartridge, load the sample tips, and press the start button. So moving on, what we have done uh, to evaluate this particular um, technology for the Indian market, we had initiated a pilot study with NICFS in Delhi. Uh, we also had an evaluation about the multi-stat. So we had an initial uh, pilot evaluation which was done for Zolpidem, Ketamine, Flunatrizpam, and Al Alprazolam. So all, all these were considered as a, uh, as kind of a sedative or a party drug which has been abused more in the northern region or in the capital region. And then what we did, this, this evaluation was more controlled. Uh, we, we, we processed uh, roughly around 24 negative oral fluid samples were tested with controlled spike drugs to see how the machines were detecting uh, you know, showing it whether it's positive or negative, basically to compare the cutoff of each of the drugs. So once this is, and the results were satisfactory, and uh, now we, we will be moving on to the field uh, trials where we will be collecting live samples using the enforcement uh, bodies, and then we will be running it on to the multi-stat and have a detailed evaluation conducted, and then we, we will, uh, you know, take this technology to all the law enforcement agencies who are trying hard to get a solution for roadside drug testing. So this is in India and the case study again, there are many case studies. Time does not permit me to give everything on, but few ones which is more relevant. The one which we did was, uh, the second one is uh, with the Alabama police in USA. So over here, the evaluation was slightly different. What we did was to compare three different oval fluid devices uh, one was Ali DS2, another one was Dagger, another one was Randox Evidence multi -stat. So we decided, uh, the, the, the department decided to compare and have an evaluation done. And uh, the, the analytes, the most commonly abused uh, over here, over in Alabama was cocaine, cannabinoids, opioids, benzodiazepine, methamphetamine, amphetamine, and methamphetamine. So these were the parameters. They checked the sensitivity, specificity, positive predict value, negative predict value, and accuracy of our system. And then this was the chart. And if you see the accuracy for most of the drugs we hit on spot on, which is definitely agreeable, 96. THC, again, a very unstable drug in oral fluid. We still managed to get above 90. 98 for opiates and benzos, methadone and methamphetamine, we got it spot on with 100% accuracy. So this is where our system stood above the, you know, the other technology uh, competitors where, which was evaluated and uh, the department, uh, you know, decided to approve all the three and they, they, they went on to, you know, uh, recommend Randox Evidence Multistat, Dragger and Allier along with you know, they, 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 they told the department that according to your convenience, you can use all the system, but the multi-stat, to be honest, the multi-stat evaluation stood the best when it came to accuracy and sensitivity in, in uh, detecting all these uh, analytes of drugs. So this was published and it is there on the website and it is published and it was done by on 25th of 24th of June, 2018. And the Alabama police is using our machine put onto a police van for random drug testing. So yes, so why we recommend oral fluid testing the way ahead for uh, roadside drug testing. So oral fluid is emerging as a popular alternative to urine. Oral fluid testing detects recent drug use and may also identify very recent usage that may not be captured in the urine testing. So when it comes to road testing, you will have to, you know, take the most recent consumption because your point of uh, detecting is the person does uh, do not involve in a road accident or he, he doesn't create a havoc on the road which is an hindrance for others so oral fluid can detect the most recent consumption and also it demonstrates a higher cost uh, positivity for almost all drugs and more than twice positivity for marijuana and lsd and other low stability drugs because when it when the study says that the moment the lsds are taken uh, the, the body, the liver starts metabolizing it into different metabolites of LSD and most of the tests are not picking it up. So 
when you see in oral fluid, the deduction window of LSDs and ketamines and THC still remains between four to six hours, which is which is very vital when 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 the when the dosage is is above the uh, you know when, when there is an overdose and when there is um, uh, there will be an issue of road accidents and things. So that needs to be stopped, and then uh, you know the person should be given the treatment or taken into police custody. So. Recommending oral fluids, the next point will be, you know, since we cover all the parameters where if there is a chance of the police department wants to test the urine sample as well as the blood, as well as the oral fluid, they can do it on the single platform. They don't have to run to different, uh, you know, hospitals or they don't have to run to different departments for different testing all on a same analyzer. So the technology again uses immunoassay, which is reliable which is accurate and the analyzer itself is sturdy. It can be put onto a Jeep and uh, or a police van and can be te taken to the spot of crime for testing. And again, uh, the new test, the most advanced ones are also onto the system and that it makes a holistic, uh, you know, offer to the police department when it comes to drug testing. So you see the, the graph over here, you see the oral fluid testing gaining importance over a period of time so this is one of the white papers published by the u.s police departments where they say that the, the urine testing is gaining uh, sorry the oral fluid testing is gaining uh, importance when it comes to roadside trusting especially for low stability drugs like marijuana and uh, the likes of lsds and ketamines and uh, the, the low stability drugs whereas the urine testing is losing its uh, uh, you know the sensitivity and drug deductions so that's pretty much uh, with my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I, I will be here to take questions if, if there is any, any from your side. Uh, sir, we have some queries in the chat box. Yeah, I'll, I'll be just uh, going into the chat box and seeing. Can I read it to you first, sir? Uh, yes, no problem. We can read it to you. So, Dr. Abhishek Das has asked, up to how long post-mortem interval the body fluids can be analyzed? Sorry, I didn't get you. Up to? Up to, up to how long post-mortem interval the body fluids can be analyzed? Uh, see, uh, roughly, I, I think the question is, from the collection of the sample to the uh, analysis is what he's asking. The timeline is what he's asking. So we, we have customers even analyzing samples, which is roughly more than three to four months also. And, uh, you know, having drugs uh, tested positive and when they run it on a confirmatory device, they are getting the same, uh, uh, you know, the, it wouldn't be the same concentration to be honest because there is a deterioration of the drugs. If it is preserved or if it is, uh, you know, the custodian of, uh, is, is kept in a, in a preserved way, then the drugs which is deducted on day one is going to be the same even after two to three months maybe the concentration is different so um, yeah up to three three to four months we can still test uh, the samples can i okay, answer sir. this question yes ma'am yeah now it will depend on drug to drug mm -hmm. and second and secondly if you preserve the sample as minus 20 or minus 80 it can last for long for years yes correct thank you ma'am so next question is, what is the price of this unit? It's from Abhishek Das only. See, uh, price again, it involves a lot of calculation. The commercials again, uh, you know, we'll have to calculate the custom duties and the clearance charges. So if there is any specific requirement about the pricing, uh, we will come directly to you and give you a proposal. Um, it's, it's not going to be, uh, you know, a big investment or a capital investment, but it can be a very similar price of your GC and LC. So it's not going to alarm you at all. But definitely write to me. I will leave my email address to you. You can come back and we will give you a proposal according to your requirements. Uh, next is Deva Surya. Uh, what are the chances of false positive can be happen to this instrument? See, the cases of false positive, again, it depends upon, uh, you know, uh, your comparison with 
the confirmatory device. What we have done, our studies internally and also the papers published, that is why we say this has been a screening device, to be honest. We don't claim it as a confirmatory device. And when it comes to a screening device, our correlation percentage shows uh, for each of the drug, it is more than 90 percentage it correlates with a confirmatory device. So if you need specific for each of the drug, then I'll have to come back to you and share more details about what are the, you know, the publications that we have done. But when it comes to a screening device, our technology is more than 90% correlating with the LCMS and GC, which is currently being called as the confirmatory device. Okay, sir. Next is from Rakesh Soni. Is it possible to detect the drug from visceral tissue? Yes. So this particular machine, uh, we have not validated. We also have a particular machine, which we call it as evidence investigator, which is a, a, a little more lab oriented machine in that we will be giving you a protocol where you will have a couple of uh, digestion steps when it comes to tissues or when it comes to hair, you will have a digestion step. And then once the digestion is done, the extract is run on the biochip. So once you once you have the machine in your lab, we will be coming down, the, the scientists from Randox will be coming down and validating each of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the sample type that you get on your laboratory and correlating with your existing method and showing you the difference also. Okay, sir. Thank you. And the next is from Selva Kumar. What about drug metabolism, half-life and chance of false negative expression in post-mortem sample? The, uh, the half-life of, see, again, when you see the drug, the metabolites of each of the drugs are being analyzed over here. And uh, to be more specific, um, you know, if, if you see, for example, Benzodiazepine has a parent group. We also uh, accommodate the metabolites like alprazolam, um, uh, the uh, the likes of um, all, all the uh, I should say the all the benzo most common benzodiazepines have been accommodated in the, in the metabolite history. And then uh, when it comes to the sensitivity or the specificity of the drugs or the correlating with the uh, you know, the confirmatory devices, I will have to share the details because it needs a long explanation in showing how each of the cross reactivity of each of the metabolites are positioned in the biochip. And that will give you an understanding why our technology is superior when it comes to detecting, especially the postmortem samples. I will share the details with you. Sir. Okay, sir. Uh, next question is what are the what are included in oral fluid? Abhishek Das, Dr. Abhishek Das has asked the question. Uh, what is included in the oral fluid in the sense, is he asking in terms of the test or is he asking in terms of the, the solution which he saw it on the collection device? Can you be more specific? Abhishek, Dr. Abhishek Das is here. Yes, yes. <clears throat> Uh, I was asking, uh, hello, sir. I am yes. Dr. Abhishek Das. I am audible. Yes. Um, uh, I said that uh, during collection, what is the what can be included in oral fluid? Is it the saliva or some kind of uh, swab that we take from uh, inside the oral cavity or something else? Because many a times we see in Indian scenario that uh, many of the people are uh, habituated in chewing. Uh, tobacco or uh, having betel nuts and uh, other supari etc kind of thing that is why I, I asked to clarify yeah so if you see if you would have seen the collection device of the oral fluid uh, it is a swab kind of a collection device where you put it into your mouth uh, you don't keep it under your tongue you keep it on the side of your uh, teeth and then uh, you collect the saliva it is it, uh, probably in, 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 I, I totally understand if it is an Indian case there is pan or there is other substances which can so um, you know out of the box we have seen uh, people you know giving some water you know uh, uh, trying to uh, bring out salivas and they, they complain that they don't have a saliva when it comes to an abuse of THC when the mouth runs dry and things but uh, what we collect in the collection device is saliva and then we put it onto the collection device and the collection device has a buffer solution where the dilution happens but in case of the indian collection you know we will have to sort it out when it comes to a pan chewer or you know if they can give uh, a, a little bit of water where they can rinse and gargle and then 
you can take uh, you know the sample but i don't know i'm not about for such a question honestly can i answer okay. this question yes, thank you yes ma'am yeah actually this is a limitation of the technology because when i to our experience if a person is chewing tobacco or something that can make the results false negative or positive so this is a limitation and as any other amino acid so oral fluid has that limitation so what do you advise to such uh, patients ma'am so you do in you such advise? cases you know you have to uh, talk for uh, you have to take an another alternative fluid in such situation you can take one another option for collecting body fluid urine would be most preferable because drug and its metabolite can be detected for a longer period of time in that case so okay. not i would not recommend blood but i would say urine so you, okay. each 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 uh, mattress has its own advantages and limitations thank you thank you ma'am next question rajalakshmi rajmohan has some queries First one is whether cocaine from hair can be detected using this device. Absolutely, you can again uh, run the same as I told you for the tissues and for hair. You will have the extraction uh, procedure that you will have to follow in, and once the extraction is done, you can run the extract onto the cartridge and detect the cocaine. So whatever test which is available on the panel, you can test for blood, postmortem blood, urine, oral fluid, and hair. when it comes to tissues you will have to opt for an another analyzer which we will be uh, giving you if you are interested we will be sending you an email which we call it as evidence investigator uh, what about estimation is it be done minimum quantity for detection so you mean to say if it is a quantitative reduction or a qualitative reduction is that the question quantity yes so this machine currently we are giving you qualitative results but from october this month this year we are moving into a quantitative results so this machine can give you quantitative results also of each of the drug and the detection level of each of the drug again depends upon each each particular drug and you know the calibration that you run on the machine since biochip we give nine different calibration curves which covers to be honest from point Uh, zero to to the highest of 6000 nanograms we collect we have a large detection window for the most common drugs so if you have any specific drug that you're looking for a detection window then i will i will share the details for that, for that through your email okay sir um, suhas biswas has asked is it possible to detect drug from body fluid or viscera if that body gets decomposed uh in the case of a decomposed body yes we had an interesting case in one of our customers uh, using it with vitreous humor uh, being tested on a blood platform and uh, the efficacy of the test or the you know when you compare it with the uh, lcms or the gc the confirmatory devices uh, it was i should be honest here the most of the drugs were detected uh, the few were not detected when when you when we compared with the confirmatory device but when it comes to the decomposed we advise them to take either the hair or the vitreous humor uh, they were able to uh, collect the vitreous humor from samples also so but yes th there are cases where they are using it and there are very good publications that they have published in other countries we can use it yes okay sir next is from shifas feroz can any virus content be found from the oral fluid using this technology virus no we, we don't detect any virus currently on the oral fluid when it comes to uh, on this machine but if you are trying to detect the covid 19 we still have the machine for that that can be detected using a evidence investigator platform okay sir abhishek has asked can stomach content be tested yes yes so stomach wash and stomach content can be tested uh, we have we have validated on that particular uh, mattress on our uh, analyzer the investigator analyzer which is more for the forensic setup and uh, we have good results when you compare it with the confirmatory device yes so i will share the details with you we have validated uh, bile we have validated liver we have validated stomach wash 
and a few other um, you know matrices when it comes to postmortem and i can share the details with you the correlations are uh, perfect for certain drugs it's spot on and for certain drugs it's accepted it's in the satisfactory range yes okay sir harry singh has asked again a question from false positive how much possibility possibilities of false false positive results if the person is under treatment and has already developed antibodies will it give false positive how to overcome false positive results if false positive results if if the patient is under treatment and then uh, you know he has already developed antibodies so that that again goes on to drug monitoring and uh, understanding what what is the history of you know uh, what is the history of drugs that again it goes to a rehab kind of an application but what we are trying to uh, do over here is to find if there is any drug presence and then you know take it to a law enforcement agencies but uh, to be honest we have not thought about if a patient has uh, you know uh, have antibodies of certain uh, drugs uh, let me go back and come back to you to your uh, with the r&d and uh, if you can share your email address i will come back to you on that sure sir sure yeah may i answer this question yes ma'am <laughs> Uh, the point is, you know, when a patient is taking uh, some prescribed drugs, in that situation, clinical has history has to be provided to the laboratory. You know, mm -hmm. clinical yes. history has to, and you have to corroborate with that history. Yes. So you know, we are getting samples uh, from the from the clinic uh, from the ward or from the OPD where we are getting. benzodiazepines is mainly prescribed to the patients and simultaneously buprenorphine which is a agon partial agonist and antagonist which is being abused also and it which is being prescribed also in that situation you know it is very difficult to make out with the laboratory to suggest that the person is on drug prescribed or he is abusing the drug so in that situation you know you are the clinical history has to be provided and you have to do the therapeutic drug monitoring also and to see whether he has taken excessive dose beside the prescribed dose so this is the only way we can confirm by the lab there is a limitation this is the limitation of the lab of the laboratories in drug testing thank you ma'am so one more question is there Uh, from Shankar Rajendra regarding particles. One minute, one minute, okay. one minute. Nitya, here actually in multiset we are detecting antibody and not not a antigen, na? Yes, antigen. Yes. Uh, then how how can this antibody interfere? It? How can the antibody? No. Uh, earlier question was if a person is consuming some drugs, there will be antibody in his body and it may uh, interfere here. Yes. But we are checking for antigens, and how can this antibodies interfere? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, if you can answer this question. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because you know, see, antibodies. Drug is an antigen. Drug yeah. is an antigen, and there is an interaction between an antigen and the antibody. So that's why I'm saying, you know, that there is a possibility that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. So the uh, question from Shankar regarding particle contamination, such such as fan, pukka, etc., filtering the fluid and then processing will make it sense. That means you are asking about if there is any contamination or if there is any, um, say, for example. Uh, if, if the patient has taken a pan or something, if there is a cross contamination, is that the question that he is asking? Will uh, that influence the sample? Uh, uh, Nikhil, the question was it's related to the earlier. The question was some of the collection of the fluid from the who are using the pan and something, right? So yes. that's why I'm asking. It will make a sense once you collect the fluid after that you process through a point to micron filter. Then you use it. You will not be having any particle that will not interfere with the. a antigen antibody reaction that's what my question actually see, see. Uh, again uh, shankar that that again requires uh, a laboratory validation we have not 
done that because see, to be honest in the western or in, in the lights of uh, us there is no uh, pan chewing very which is very common which is seen in india so as dr raka was saying if that is the case and if you are not satisfied with uh, you know the sample that you have collected in the oral fluid then you can opt for a multiple uh, sample collected from the same patient you can you know have his urine being collected or in the light of the blood also being corrected and you can have uh, it tested so it can uh, occur in in uh, you know one or two cases when you when you come across these kind of cases so yes that can be done uh, on a trial basis we can still try and find out so um, one more thing can yeah. i answer this the adulterants yes, adulterants will always interfere with the assay adulterants would always interfere with the assay so in sometimes you know collection site has to be very vigilant while collecting the samples especially in the case of drug abuse very very vigilant uh, one has to be if the collection of the sample is not done properly then in that case all your efforts will go in vain so for forensic purpose also if the sample is kept at room temperature for long and it is kept in the police custody for uh, at room temperature sometime and it uh, is going to the laboratory after uh, two uh, after three days or two days then there is uh, there is a possibility that you may not get the correct picture of the sample so that is why all the samples to be collected very judiciously and very uh, uh, it has to be kept uh, uh, i would say that great precautions has to be taken while collection of the samples so sample collection is the main part of any analysis drug testing yes thank you ma'am okay one more question is there sir dr amit patil he has asked does the does this device detect insecticides or aluminum phosphide uh this device doesn't uh, we we have a, a pesticide array coming out which is more focused on organophosphorus uh we still on the developing stage uh but aluminum phosphide and uh, if you say raton that is not included on the first stage but yet we can we can develop if there is a huge potential in the market we can def definitely go back and ask the r&d to have a, a biochip specific for that but first we are coming out with organophosphorus which honestly we feel that is the most common pesticides throughout the india throughout india Okay, sir. I think questions are over now. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. And the participants, those who need e-certificate, shall mention your full name and email ID in the chat box. Now, I request Ranjit sir to conclude this session. Is Jagmar sir is there? Yes. Jagmar sir. Yes. Sir, please some comments from your part. okay anyway another good session from randox team actually uh, like anil's presentation this also seen to be very useful screening test uh like i said in the earlier session uh, this method we have to make it more useful to our a uh, raw narcotic samples also then only the forensic application will be complete surely toxicology analysis is a main thing yes. and some preliminary results will be obtained from this uh we have to make some effort how to make our raw raw ganja uh raw opm it can be tested using this for that we have to uh, make neutral body fluids yes uh, that also has to be worked out for uh, future and uh, uh, one more thing in the field application in our society most of the narcotic drugs are prone to the school and college students so in i think in kerala the excise department is looking for some uh, useful device to check in schools and colleges uh, whether narcotics are used or 
like that. In that scenario, this uh, instrument will be very useful. And my suggestion is uh, try to be more validated and precise instruments are to be brought in the market because uh, both false positive and false negative both are problems that is to be minimized that is the only uh, solution that the people will accept this technology anyway it's a good effort both from uh, anil and nikit nayan uh, thank you once again for uh, making it a very success thank you thank you sir then raka ma'am any more comments and, and uh, 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 we are familiar with the rendox technology and evidence investigator we have already in our laboratory but i just want to know what's the cost per sample of this instrument if we go for a kit ma'am i will send you a personalized email ma'am you are already my customer <laughs> okay oh, okay yeah. okay shiva shiva prasad sir sir yes sir yes sir rasak sir is there rasak sir is there any questions from your side yeah rasak, mr rasak please hi good morning morning hello hello good morning good morning am i audible yeah yeah yes, sir very well okay okay uh, i think uh, this instrument as uh, jagumar sir mentioned and this instrument is uh, is very useful and uh, now uh, that means the excise and other <coughs> police agencies that means this investigation agency are using now using kits in uh, that is uh, narcotic kits uh, but it is giving very false negative and false positive tests generally and they are taking samples as like a drug and after the lab report it turns to or maida or some like <laughs> that means uh, uh, that is uh, sodium bicarbonate or like that they are falsely they are taking like first they are getting result by getting sorry by getting from the kit result at just like ketamine but later on the final analysis from the laboratory turns to and they are and <laughs> the agencies are that is looking as like a, that in say just a suspicious about the laboratory and mm -hmm. while using this while using this uh, type of uh, that means more accurate instruments like this and that should can be uh, eliminated that thing and this is a very good effort uh, and uh, and as uh, jay kumar sir mentioned it should be uh, strictly validated and verified i think i uh, just one uh, doubt uh, nikit i that means uh, let me ask to you yes sir go ahead uh, that means uh, uh, just uh, that uh, the samples like adulterated samples like brown sugar uh, as yeah. you mentioned that uh, uh, using this kit uh, that means uh, uh, around 21 samples can be analyzed i think yes sorry 21 uh, drugs can be analyzed from the single sample correct and uh, adulterated samples like brown sugar generally brown sugar is adulterated with that means uh, diacetyl morphine adulterated with uh, uh, other drugs like diazepines um, barbiturates and just like and then how can be uh, that means uh, is it is possible to uh, analyze whether uh, it is an uh, that means uh, this is uh, that means uh, can be sorry can be quantified to conclude that means this is a diacetyl morphine adulterated with uh, Uh, benzodiazepine or something like that. Yeah. So basically, you're 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 asking that your sample type would be a raw material instead of a biological. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Raw so, material. Raw material. So uh, honestly speaking, we have tried the, the these kind of an experiment with a few of our customers in India, uh, where we have dissolved uh, uh, benzodiazepine tablets, which is uh, in the pure form. We have also added few of the adulterations like um, some. acetic acid and things like that and we have yeah. tried a trial and error method where yeah. our machine was was the, the that particular sample was run on the urine uh, validated kit and then it was tested and it picked up benzodiazepine and showed the uh, showed that it was positive for benzodiazepine but when it comes to the adulterant or identifying the adulterant no we don't have capacity for that 
but it can identify the drug and say that whether it has presence of benzos or presence of cocaine when it comes to a raw material yes but okay. it is not applicable but we have tried it to be honest so i can answer this question yes sir. you know okay. if if this a if it is a raw sample and uh, mainly the brown sugar contains many adulterants when it comes to uh, for testing in that situation you have to dissolve your sample in uh, water or something and you have to filter it clean it first step is the extraction step and you first let the sample be cleaned and after that the sensitivity of the machine is so good in that situation it will pick it up if even if it has a benzodiazepine in uh, uh, nanograms or so or for example i'm saying or but it will fail to uh, fail to differentiate between acetyl codeine or you will get an answer morphine positive but it will fail to uh, identify that it is acetyl codeine or oxycodone or what unless and until you have an antibody for that in that uh, in that chip otherwise not but you will get opioid positive okay, okay we, we can differentiate the acetic and base like that yes yeah. okay 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 thank you nigita and uh, and shiva uh, team thank you uh, 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 dr abdurak um sir i would like to intervene into this discussion because i'm just listening my name is also my name is anil and i am also working with randox toxicology so the discussion yeah, is going in a very technical and scientific way and i cannot be silent aside so i just thought of i will interfere in it so okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah with regards to the uh, you know the um, testing of raw material Yeah. Uh, I would Then like to add time. something here because the platform is validated for biological sample by Randox. Okay. Okay. However, okay. that does not mean that you are limited to use only biological sample. Okay. So uh, our limitation from Randox is, uh, you know, to validate different samples, like uh, uh, possibly different raw materials, etc., uh, by our own research and development team. the time is the main factor we are, we are interested in it into it we wanted to develop more and more but the time is a major factor because our research and development is overwhelmed with a lot of other works so okay. what we are doing currently is uh, we are one of the universities in uk is uh, doing a research uh, and study with our multi stat testing uh, you know for un un unknown materials so okay okay rightly what professor rakha jain mentioned like they are dissolving the, the non material into negative urine so they are pure and they are testing okay. on it but this study report hasn't published yet as soon as it comes sir, we can share it with you and uh, okay. you know we can also help you to validate this uh, in any laboratory like our technical team is so strong where if you wanted okay. to do something which is not validated by randox we can provide the technical assistance and i am sure that that will help you to do it locally in your laboratory okay thank you yeah thank you one more suggestion to our forensic team also uh, that means uh, please not that that sir jay kumar sir and the register thing i think the police person or investigation agency now think uh, that means that only please only blood and urine they are not well aware of that the samples other methods like hair just like that now they are thinking that you know spc in kerala spc has in fact all the person to take samples for in the case of drug sample for a drug case or drug drug case to take samples of uh, hair samples uh, i think uh, that they uh, should be let us try the uh, our forensic team to the to the agency uh, or the higher up it Okay, sir. Uh, yes, sir. We can conclude. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Rasna, I haven't understood what you are saying. Your speech uh, was broken. Anyway, time is over, so I am stopping here. Thank you, Mr. Nigit, for your wonderful, informative, and uh, thought-provoking sessions. Let us uh, forensic community in the country will start changing with the innovations that you have mentioned here. thank you all participants for your active discussion especially raka jain ma'am jaykumar sir abdul razak sir and mr anil 
being the part of uh, this webinar of Indian Criminology and Forensic Science Association. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you, dear participants, Raga Ma'am, Sir, Nigit Daniel, Prasad Sir, and other officers from Chemical Examination Lab and from Science Laboratories of other uh, stage two. Thank you for your participation and active discussion. Thank you, Ashudi, for moderating the session also, and my uh, team, ICFSA members, for the support and active participation. Thank you all. We will be meeting in the next session. Uh, you can leave the session by mentioning your name and email ID in the chat box for getting the e-certificate. Thank you all. Thank you.